Hello, and welcome back. We are going to move on to our next part of our maths lessons. And we're going to actually recap some of the stuff that we did last year. And the reason we're doing that is that first off, you need to have a firm understanding of what we're doing in division uh, to be able to do it. But secondly, it was a long time ago and we obviously had lockdown in between. So we need to go back over those. So today we're going to be looking at dividing a two digit number by a one digit number. Now the majority hopefully of you can do this using your times tables. But we're just going to talk it through so we can get an idea of the models used in order to understand it. So that when we move on to large numbers, those models can help us solve those problems. So first thing we need to think about is our key vocabulary. We've got the word divide, dividing, divide by, divide into. And this is how we're going to break up a number. To divide something, we're breaking it into equal parts as to how many there might be. The next word we need to know is grouping, sharing, share, or share equally. And this is another way of saying divide. It means the same thing, that you're going to share a certain amount between a certain amount of people, or we're going to group them into a different number of groups. And again, if we're doing this, it needs to be equal. Each group must receive the same amount. Another one you need to know is left, leftover or remainder. Again, all of these mean the same thing. And what this is, is when we share a certain amount out between groups or we group them into different amounts, sometimes we can't group them completely equally. And we're left with a few left over and some equal groups. And that little bit that's left over is what we call the remainder or the leftover ones. Okay? So, first off, let's get started with a warm up. Here are some questions. I just want you to have a quick go. Try and use your time table knowledge to help you and see what answers you come up with. Pause now and have a go. Okay, so hopefully you get these answers. 40 divided by 4 is 10 because 10 times 4 is 40 and you can go the other way around and that's what I mean by using a times table to help you. What you have to think about is if I'm dividing a number by a single digit what could I have times that digit by to get to the whole number and that's what your division is. So 12 divided by 4 would be 3 because 3 times 4 is 12. 52 divided by 4 is 13. Now this isn't in our times tables, but we do know 12 fours at 48, and this is four more, so we know it has to be 13. And then the last one, 84 is divided by seven is 12. Okay, so if we're looking at doing 39 divided by three, we could group them into three groups. Now, do we have to be careful with this or do we just group them by the number of counters we have. So I could split them. There they go, there's four counters in each group. But is that equal? Well, the problem is these counters here, aren't they? Because these counters all count for 10 ones. And if they count for 10 ones, then this actually is 13, this is 22, and this is only four. So it's not even. So this doesn't work. We can't split them like this. So maybe we have to think of another way to do it. So what we could do, 39 divided by 3, is think of them in tens and ones. Split the ones into three and the tens into three. And you can see over here, much like when we're timesing by, what we've done is set up our tens and ones here. And we've got one, two, three groups because we're dividing by three. And what we have to do is split them evenly. We split our tens evenly and we split our ones evenly. So splitting our tens evenly, that's one ten in each group. And splitting our ones equally, it's three ones in each group. And then we look at just one of our groups and that gives us our answer. It's 10 and three, which is in total 13, there's 13 in each of our groups, so the answer would be 13. And this is probably the easiest way to do it, thinking about our columns and splitting them and using counters. So here's another one, it's 45 divided by three. Here's our tens and ones. 
there's a problem we're going to encounter. So I want you to pause now and think about the, what the problem might be. Okay, so hopefully you've noticed that when we split our tens, there's four of them. We can split them evenly into one ten into each, but we're left with this ten over here. So what we have to do with that ten is we have to split it down into ones. There we go. That ten became ten ones, and they are all here. And then what we can do is split all of our ones, so the ones that we originally had and the ones here that we've just made from that 10, exchange from that 10, and we can split it down. So what we've actually done is taken 45 as our total number and we've partitioned it into two parts. We've partitioned it into 30 and 15. Here's our 15 ones and here's our 30. Now both of these two numbers are divisible by three nicely. 30 is 10 threes, and that's because it's in our tens, we know that. And 15, look, five in there, five in there, five in there. So 15 is split into groups of five. So if we look at just one of our groups, there's one ten, five ones, so our answer is 15. So I want you to have a look at those ways to do it, but do do it. And then I want you to have a go at these ones and see if you can work it out using a similar method, uh, if you can. If you think you can do it another way, that's fine, but I would like to see you try it this way, just so I can see that you understand that principle. The problem is if we move straight on to uh, other methods, we might not understand how we got to the answer from that method. Pause now and have a go. Okay, so our answers. So first, our answer up the top up here, and we can use any of our methods in order to do these ones, these hopefully nice straight and forward, and you can use your place value counters. You can see what he's done. I can't do it because I've got left over counters, but actually he's got a 10 here, which could be split down into 10 ones. That means in total he'd have, with those ones there, 12, and 12 divided by 4 can be done. And then that would mean that those ones would be added into there. And that's the important thing. So the actual answer would be the 3 we get from there, plus that 1 and that 10, that's 14. And that means our answer is 14 down here. And the same with these ones, trying it out, remembering that it doesn't matter which way around. Now, this one's interesting because the equal sign doesn't mean we still read everything the same way. So 45 divided by 3 is written this way, equals 15. Or 15 equals the same thing as 45 divided by 3, which is what we've got written up here. Now, the problem some people have is they have, think they have to all be in reverse. 15 equals 3 divided by 45, because you think you're reading it this way. And that's not true. This is not the way to do it, because this actually is 15 is the same thing as 3 divided by 45. And that's very, very different. You still read your maths numbers that way, the same way we read in English. Um, and this means that we have to read from that direction. So it is 15 equals 45 divided by 3. OK, next one, we've got 51 divided by 3. So what we're going to do is think about partitioning 51. And we could partition 51 into 50 and 1. The problem here is that 50 isn't easily divisible by 3, and 1 isn't easily divisible by 3. So this actually isn't a very nice one to do. Because when we divide by 3, we come up with some odd numbers. So the easiest way to think about it is a nice 10 that is divisible by 3, which is 30. And normally I would say 
group them in tens if you can. So what I would do is I'd say, okay, 51, I can definitely get one group of 10 out of that and that's 30. So I know I've got that. What I'm left with at that stage is 21. Is 21 in my three times table? Yes, it is. Okay, that's fine. I'll leave it like that. That I can divide by three and get seven. So my answer therefore is 17. And what you want to do is think about what it is. If this number wasn't or, for example, if this number was bigger, so if I was saying that we had here uh, 72 as our answer, I'd okay, okay, I've taken 30 out. I've still got here um, 42 left. I could take another 30 out. That's another 10 lots of three. And I'm left with then 12, which then I can make another bubble of 12. That's divisible by three, it equals four. So 72 divided by three would be this 10 plus this 10 plus that four, and that would equal 24. But it, the easy way to do this is to split it down into groups of whatever 10 is of that number. Now, if you knew what 23s were, you'd know it's 60 and you could fit that in there as well. And that's where this method comes in. It's grouping it into nice group chunks to deal with. So here's some questions. What multiples of four and five do you know that fit nicely into those? Remember, chunks of 10 are useful. See what you can do, and then we'll go through it in a minute. Pause now. Okay, so the first one, look in this one, they've grouped it into a group of 10, 40 is 10 fours, and then we're left with 24, which is in the four times table, so we can then solve that one and get 16. The same in this side. The first grouping they do is 50, which is 10 times, and then they're left with 25, which is in the five times table, which means 10 and five, the answer is 15. In both of these cases, the first group they do look is 10 times whatever the number they're dividing by. And that's a chunk that they can take out and then they just have to deal with a number that's within the 10 times. Makes your life much easier. So have a look at this one, have a go, see what you can come up with. Um, and then try your try question five using those skills. Work out which one is bigger than the other. Off you go. Okay, and our answers. First off, we've got 92 beads, and it's shared between four friends, so it's divided by four. So we can do, and we'll do it over here, 92 as our total. I'm going to take away a chunk of 10, which is 40. So that I know is 10 lots. Then I'm going to do another chunk of 40, which again is another 10 lots, because we're dividing by four. That's 40 and 40 is 80. That leaves me with 12. That's my next chunk. That's three lots. Then I just add the, the parts together, 10 plus 10 plus three equals 23, which is our answer. Now you could do it if you knew that 92, if you knew 80 was a nice chunk of 20, that would then leave you with 12 and you can get three that way too. And that again leads to the same answer. It's just that you know that 80 is 20 lots rather than having to split it down to two 40s. And then the same goes for these ones. You just need to check which way around your greater than or less than symbol works. That's all for today, guys. Thank you very much. I hope that made some sense. I know that the math actually was quite easy in it, but we're, at the moment we're just looking at the different methods we could use in order to help us. So thank you for the lesson. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.